That's why I just. Oh yeah, it. and I didn't mean to jump in. It just yeah. it looked like a stopping point, and I've been wanting to ask the community about Spy T for quite some time. I, so I actually want. I was. I'm actually very interested in Spy T. Right. Actually, so, I'm waiting for it to drop the maintenance on Robin Hood, and I'm going to get heavy Spy into it as like, one of my spite. Yeah, it's I'm, I'm really liking it, but I, I wanted to just kind of get the consensus of everyone and see what they're saying. Okay, so I guess they're owning the shares. Come here. Um, yeah. Are they buying Spy, Spy. Brandon? Yep, they're yeah, buying okay, Spy, yeah, and they're doing red call spreads on. Uh, so they to own. The they're going to own Spy. Yeah, and they could cover call on Spy. And uh, and they buy yeah, a call. They're, they're doing it. Yeah, and they're buying a call. So they got a, a so they bearish, and call. Uh, bullish play. Oh. Yeah, they got a bearish bullish. Yeah, you, play you get higher your on. cap, and then if it goes past the strike price, you then get some upside past that. If it does shoot past the strike price, cool. if not, they're trying to get you a twenty percent yield. It's pretty much well, like spy eye, but they're doing covered calls. Well, let's ask the option trader in the room, Claude. What do you what do you think of that? I mean, yeah, Claude, I'd love to hear what you think about this spy team, man. Because if you've seen it, you know. I'm you not even. It up, your stream. I'm not even. Fo I'm not even following that one. You can pull it up on your Camir stream. We're all watching it. You just pull up Spy T on Defiance. It's a Defiance fun. Yeah, it just came it's out. Uh, it just came, came out, out Claude. I don't know if you're Claude. tracking on because you you buy QQ and Spy and all that stuff to do option trading. Yeah, yeah. And you do you do call spreads, right, Claude? If I remember right. Yeah, that's predominantly most of my. Yeah, most of my that, that's in yeah. your wheelhouse. So I'm I'm happy you're here, man. Um, well, shoot, you don't know much about it. Darn it. Well, yeah. So here's the thing: as far as call spreads in general, uh, this is a real hard environment to be deploying call spreads, in my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, because as the market drifts up, you're constantly getting threatened on your call spreads. Yeah. You know, uh, on the put side, that's a different story. Here you go, Claude, really quick. I don't want to interrupt Claude at all. I just wanted to maybe give a visual. That's the description right there, come here on the website, the brand new description oh, for Spy T. Um, yeah, I'm turn not, it on I, for a second. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Brandon. Yeah, I'm, oh, I, right. I get I'm just trying to give Claude a visual. I mean, I get it at this current market situation, Claude. I'm with you, but yeah. you know, I'm talking a lot like over the period of a year, you know, because they're, they're buying a call, they're selling a call, yeah, and and they're 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 talking about a twenty percent yield on that. Now, what do you think that? Sh I, I know it's only been out a week, so we we don't we can't say nothing. We don't have any history on so it, but. What are you thinking about that that share price and the twenty percent divvy on that? I mean, you think it's going to maintain fairly well? You know, twenty percent. Yeah, I can say it, it can maintain that. It can maintain that. And actually, I think that's that's them sandbagging. Actually, to be honest with because you. You can do more than that. I like yeah, it when I it comes out in the fifties because you get so much more room. You know, like what like what some of the option traders said is that you, you know, because. Defiance and Yield Max, they have to pay the dividends. Uh, you know, the option trader, they don't have to pay the dividends. You know, so and therefore you keep all the profits. You know, and and so I'm pretty sure they can produce forty percent easily, just based on the number I've seen these guys talking about. Well, what I honestly think is they're calling it Spy T, so the S&P 500 target income. So I honestly think now you can call me crazy here. I think what they're going to do is I think they're going to do a managed distribution with return of capital. And I think they're going to try to do an s -fall. Because what the CEO said is they, they have the high income part done now. They have IWMY, JEPY, and QQQY. But they get, they're getting demand from people who like SPY and iSPY and JPI. They want a fund like that that holds the S&P 500 and that won't, you know, quote unquote, decay. It's not decaying. You're just getting the income up front. But... This, what they're going to try, I personally think they're going to try to do a managed distribution, 20% annualized flat like SVOL. I think they're going to do an SVOL like payment, in my opinion, on, the, on this fund. And if they don't make that amount or they make more, they're going to pay a set amount every month to exactly hit 20% target income. I honestly think that's what they're going to do. This is my opinion. So are they doing it on... Right the here. SPY, or are they doing on the SPX? SPY. 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 
Yeah, these are their holdings right here. They own uh, 2.4 mil of the S&P 500 ETF trust. And then, um, what is that, the Treasury? No, see, they doing, they doing on the SPX. They doing on the big boys. So they're that changes the game. No, I, I thought I read spy. that at the, top, at the top there before he scrolled down. They doing it on the big boys. SPXW? Yeah, the SPX. The, yep, that's what they're doing it on. All right, you, you got you to Well, find, I'm showing the holdings. You and define they, what's they the difference between yeah. the SPY and the, and the actual S&P 5. Well, no, oh, like it even shows the spy stock price is of 511.72. It's not SPX. So SPY yeah, is yeah, the yeah. ETF, but they're doing yeah. on the actual index yeah. itself, the SPX. And Jeff, y is, does, yeah. Jeff Y does the SPX. These are doing SPY. No, no, no. If I'm looking at it right there from what oh, I'm yeah, the right there. Oh, yeah. The call is SPX. Oh, I yeah. see what you're talking about down here. Uh, oh, yeah, the they... call spy. Oh, I under, I get what you're saying. So maybe they're holding spy as the collateral instead of treasuries. No, they're not. There's no touching spy at all. Well, no, like the mark. Look at up here. I get what Claude's saying. Yeah, Claude's they're saying holding down 4, here. Compared. These, these two are SPX. Like these two right here, the positions Claude's talking about, that is SPX. As you can look at the price, 5130. But if you look at 97.91 of their assets, it's in the actual spy. Like just the spy. They're, no they're holding spy, and it looks like they're selling the spreads on the SPX. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Good stuff. What do you think, Claude? That's Sorry, a lot that's of money. That's 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 a lot of premium <laughs> dealing with the SPX. Yes, there is. Yeah, that's the big boy. But on the same side, I mean, you know, if you want to sell call spreads in an environment that's drifting upward, you got to be real mindful of that train that's coming. You know, uh, the SPX will run you over if you're not careful. Yeah. It will uh, run you over. Uh, yeah, credit call spreads good, on the S and P. Good, good premium. Oh, I mean, I no doubt about that. Good premium on the index indices, whether it be SPX or NDX, good premium. Yeah. So prioritizing options with near term. Yeah, so selling call options at or near the money strike prices and buying call options above that strike price. Should the S&P value rise above the upper strike price, SPYT stands a profit from further upside appreciation in the values in the index's value. That makes sense. Okay. So Hello, do you think so they hit that twenty percent? They're going to do a managed distribution. You think? You think they're just going to have it change every month and try to hit twenty percent by the end of the year? Potentially, but it looks like they're going to. The benefit of this is if they're holding shares, they get to, instead of replica, replicating the stock movement synthetically, they're holding spot. Yeah. Yeah. And then the call credit spreads are cash settled, so they're not losing share. They're just going to lose. Cash. Exactly. Yeah. They're pretty much just using spy as the collateral. <laughs> so. I mean, it's it's just a different strategy. Same same thing, just different strategy. Yep. Yeah, they're they're holding shares this time. Yep. Is like this spy the They're weekly? pretty much just doing uh, monthly calls. Are they planning to pay weekly? Like uh, no, no, it's no, monthly no. right there. It, it pays the same right here, Kamara. Right, right. here, it pays the same as uh, the other defiance. All right. I don't know the other. This yeah, is not so the same exact it's not the QDTE that pay weekly. Nope. Nope. No. I I do have those ones. Say those are very interesting. Honestly. But yeah, but he uh, just I was trying to answer Casey's thing. Uh, Claude answered it really well. These are very interesting. Come here. They just, I only bought a share of these. But. There's tax benefits to doing um, spreads on the yeah. SPX. Yeah. As well. Yep, it's yeah. like SPYI. Yep, 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 yep. 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 So, so Claude, you, you're thinking that because they're holding SPY um, and because they're doing a credit spread and only paying, well, their goal 20%. Which, you know, if that's their goal, that's what they're going to meet. We've already yeah. seen that. We have, they have a past performance of many funds that's, you know, that do that. So you're thinking that that share price is going to be more stable, particularly, let's say, in a downturn environment versus, say, QQQI or JEPI or JEPI even maybe? What do you think? The fact that they're holding the actual ETF, I would say yes, because unlike uh, Yield Max, where they have synthetic, 
that synthetic has a time stamp on it that's yeah that, that we have, that we're fighting against so we're fighting against yep. time decay with the synthetic and yield max which depreciates pretty rapidly the closer to every day yeah exactly so as far as stabilization and the fact that, you know in the way kc's talking about i would say yes that would be a little bit more stable if they're going to be holding the spy etf instead yeah, of they're not fighting against, right they're not fighting against double time yeah, yeah there's no theta when you're holding the shares right for, right versus the exactly. option so i, I think so they're trying to compete with the spy theta, yeah you think so yeah, I think they're trying to give you like a, a 20% yield on SPY I with just a different against SPY I with a different strategy. They're using the index, they're getting the 60 40 tax benefit, but they're just doing a different collateral strategy. And like Claude said, I find it very interesting that you could get some upside past the strike. Um, yeah, and even if it is return of yeah. capital, I'm personally fine with it. Like, I at a $50 share price, like, I'm totally fine. <laughs> like, honestly, well, how I much don't know. this thing's 20 bucks, man. This thing is oh, it's 20, 20 right? Oh, yeah. I was thinking of the X. Yeah, you're right. I was thinking around Hill. Yeah, the, the upside, oh. the upside would come from holding the spy. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, and, it, and it, the call it, option on SPX. Yeah. Yep. yep. I mean, but see, that's that's the thing. Even if they get busted on their their call credit spread, the spy shares could still appreciate. You know. Yeah. Yeah, with oh. no theta, no delta issues, no gamma, yeah. nothing. I'm holding Just it with Jeff. The Wyatt. straight shares, right? So yeah. I'm really liking it. And before I like got too excited, you know, and because I'm like, I really like this. I want to do. Yeah. I bought a Just share. Bounce, dip my bounce it off. Bounce it off, you boys. I'm, Just see what I'm you curious all though. I'm I'm curious to know why they chose. If they say, hey, tax per. Tax benefits, okay, understandable. But I'm curious on why they decided to hold the SPY but do the credit spreads on the SPX. Because that's they, a they much may, larger product. Yeah, they may have been SPY. looking at the they may have been looking at the mistakes that uh Yomax has been making on the on the synthetics. Oh uh, like is, 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 that could be. Also, in my opinion, too, I think they need to differentiate from the competitors. Because if they just did the index, then they're just a 20% version of SPY I. And then some people yeah. would probably go, like, what, why would I sell all my SPY I if I've been holding it for a year to just buy this thing? Whereas they're trying to, like, differentiate. And I could be totally wrong, bro. I'm just saying, like, I'm just trying to think of the mind of the fund managers, why they release this product. Um, I think they're just trying to differentiate from SPY I, personally. I don't even know if they're competing with Jeppy or anything because they don't even hold the S and P five hundred. I think this is a kill X Y L D and Spy I. Um, that probably didn't answer your question. This is a hell of a time for them to bring it out, though. Yeah, yeah it kind of is. I just like the <laughs> buy time. the buy call side of it. I, I'm very intrigued in that. If they can get a twenty percent yield, man. That's five percent more than S Vol, bro, on the S and P five hundred. I mean, with lower. Yeah, band, and, and they're owning. Spy. They own it. I mean, that that, that to me is just. Matt, I think Spy it's gonna, it's gonna go up Spy, with Spy. Spy is so, the best ETF in the world. Right? So when so. Spy go up, they're gonna go up with it. You know? yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. right. right. So hold, on, though. Well. hold on, hold on, hold on, well, hold on, guys. Pump the brakes a bit. So the Spy, the SPX is a larger product than the Spy. So like, yes, the SPY shares can go up, but if they lose on that call credit spread. It's, it's, it's going to be, be a bigger, large, larger loss versus if they were just doing call credit spreads on SPY. It takes yeah. more capital to play in that field. He has a point. So, like the he money that they can ahead. lose, yeah, the the money that double they can plus. lose is a lot larger. It's a lot bigger than double, I believe. Yeah, it, at least I, I don't play that. Double yeah, that losses. It, yeah, it's, well, it's they, don't they have to limit it to twenty percent of what they use by regulations, or like twenty five percent what they can use for options? I'm not. I'm looking at here. They only have five. They got five shares of the call and five shares of. I guess that's the. What, what is the negative? Well, five? Granted, that's why they didn't, they don't have as much as they should have. Otherwise, that's oh, five. Yeah. Okay. That, okay. You see, because if you have say if you double that lot, if you double double yeah. those share, that means you probably could triple the loss if we hit that. You see what I'm saying? I like. Yeah, isn't is Claude? Isn't like one thousand shares of 
SPY equivalent to it's like a 100 shares of, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's or 10 so you, shares. You can get away with doing one credit spread on the SPX, right. which would be equivalent to doing like 10 uh, mm -hmm. spreads on the SPY. On the SPY, right, yeah. yeah. So yep. those Just losses are, are going to be big right. compared to right. the shares, like so or, theoretically, or they're just not going to be able to do many contracts. Yeah, that's that's what we should see. We should see these spreads, whether they be yeah, that five plays. wide. Like that last one was ten wide, but we should see a minimal amount of those spreads being put on. If that makes sense, right? Yeah. It should be yeah. very few amount. Very interesting. And they're doing them um, pretty much near DTE, what, 311? So, yeah, Monday, expiring Monday. Very interesting. Yeah. What did the prospectus say as far as their time to an expiration? Uh, they're did doing, I think, it, I can look at it again. I'm pretty sure it's zero to one. It's near, I, I think okay. the only time they do a one DTE is either a weekend opportunity weekend. Yeah. or at, yeah, yeah um, I had it. I read it, or I went okay. through it a little bit earlier. So, so they're trying to do a, uh, they're trying to do or mimic the 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 QY. Is that what they're trying to do? But just doing it with spreads. No, the QY they do. Puts. No, the QY are the bullish puts on the index. Yeah, yeah but okay, I should have clarified good. on that. I should have clarified on that. So, sorry, the QY yeah. does. The, the zero. They do the zero. Yeah. The same thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah those, they're it. doing. They they sell what the CEO, Defiance CEO, said for Jeb. The other Defiance funds is they do 4 p.m. That's when they do the trade. So it's technically a zero DTE because it's 24 hours, but it's 4 p.m. Yeah. to 4 p.m. So that's what she said. These guys, these guys are doing them in the morning, right, and dumping them uh, in the day. Is that right? I think no, I think that's, I think they're doing I, that's them around them him. That's day. the QDT. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, they literally they turn it off overnight. They give you all the upside overnight, and then they they close it out in the morning. I, I got you. Sure. Yeah. There's so many coming and out, man. I'm getting getting confused. It's awesome. Yeah. What a great time yeah. to be alive. Well, there was actually baby. a fact sheet here on the QDT. They did a little illustration that helped me understand like what they're doing. It, it's just, I don't want to bore people. I just I found this. This is for XDT and QDT. It's the same strategy, but they had like a little illustration of how it moves overnight, and they tell you like what what the strategy is at least for the overnight. Um, but. Uh, each so trade day, this, the fund will sell a cover call, yeah. So with this spy T, are they just going to leave them alone, or are they going to actively manage them? And, Actively. Uh, okay, so that means if they get threatened, they might, they're, they're going to take action. Yep, actively uh, managed. Our strategy revolves around holding shares of the ETFs that track the S&P, okay, and selling daily credit call spreads on the index, on the actual index, yeah. Yeah, all of them uh, say active. Though, are they are they going to yeah. set it and forget it, or are they going to be rolling? Yeah, Question. that's that's but yeah, yeah, that's more. That's what I want to say. Yep, appreciate sure right. it. All. So yeah, we should. If you know, we should you know what more, I am curious about because I read about this. I think these are flexes, so I think they're to expiration. I could be wrong though, but I'm going to look on Robin because I'm pretty sure even their description on Robinhood says they do flex options. Hmm. Let me make sure. So I mean, so that's which I made. No, no, nope, never that's mind. Me. Nope, uh, I'm incorrect. I was looking at. I think that's a. Uh, I think that's YBTC. I was talking about the secondary objective. Yeah, no, the Robinhood description is pretty blank. Yeah, no, I think your your guess is as good as mine. I, I, I mean, they're doing they're doing dailies, right? So it's active, but I don't know if they're rolling, right? Who who knows? I guess we'd have to look at it. I'm sure ROD will track it, or somewhat convexity will probably take a look at because he's really interested in this one. Yeah, we just got to see some performance. I, I personally see it as a higher risk version of spy eye and your risk tolerance. You know what I mean? Like, if, if you had spy eye, you like spy eye, or you like those kind of funds, stay with those. If you wanted a higher yield, slightly higher risk potentially, in the up or downside, maybe, then, you know, maybe you go with this one. Which, you know, Defiance is always trying to be like, you know, a little bit of the edge lord in this kind of industry. You know, they're always trying to like push it. I mean, the defiance funds are pretty revolutionary, and now everyone's doing these like zero TTEs and stuff. So now they're like, okay, how? What? What else can we do in the income field? Oh, people want more spy products. Okay, people are bored of twelve apparently. So let's try to kill all the twelves and let's do a twenty 
And now me personally, like I said, I really think they're going to try to manage the distribution. Do you know how attractive this would look for four months if they paid like a straight, you know, whatever monthly to equalize a 20% yield, probably like, what is it, like 1.5% or so, or 1.6%, whatever it would equal a 20% yield annually. They just pay that managed distribution out every month. Um, I don't know, though. Because if, if the distribution fluctuates like crazy, um, you know, sure, maybe they'll hit their target of 20%. But how much can it really fluctuate on a SPY? You know what I mean? Like on a SPY product, I guess it could, but it's not like a stock. I don't know, though. Well, bottom line is this, guys. So, uh, uh, first of all, I'm a huge fan of Defiance. Uh, and so far, QQQ, IWY is a gold mine for me. I'm, I'm harvesting that thing like crazy. And... Um, and so far, so far, everything they've been doing is doing right, except maybe Jeff Y. One can make argument Jeff Y is their 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 worst performing ETF. Um, but uh, but I, I think I you know the best way to do it if you have extra cash, throw some money in there and, and just watch it. You know, just at least track it. If you're not happy, then just sell it back off. And you know, you're talking about maybe four or five shares to start off, just to open a position so you can. He have some skin in the game, and so you see it. Uh, like Casey, how he does it, he buy like one or two shares just to, to, to have some skin in the game, and then so you can see how it works. And then, and if it, you know, I, I think I think there is some potential in it. There's, uh, I, I believe in it because any time that you you buy anything that produces high um, volatility and high premium, you're gonna make good money. It just it's just the nature of it. Uh, 